Good afternoon, everybody. It is a raining, cold, wet, nasty, disgusting day in Northern Virginia. It's Tuesday. I texted Pat today. I said, hey, we should should probably record this, this UVA podcast today. Um, for those of you in the content world, I don't know if there's a more difficult week to do content than Thanksgiving, uh, because pretty much I would say, dare say Tuesday by noon, everybody's just like, eh, I don't feel like doing anything anymore. So, you know, here we are. We are the sons of Saturday. We're here to preview the Commonwealth Cup, Virginia taking on Virginia Tech in Charlottesville at 3.30 for bowl eligibility, for pride, for honor, and for the Commonwealth. Pat, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm good. Just finished dinner. It's good to be back uh, under the Finn roof. Uh, my brother got in from Chicago late last night. We just had our first Finn family dinner, just the five of us, uh, since last Christmas. So, wow. Uh, a big shout out to my mother and my sister, uh, the beef stroganoff and the accompanying salad was I beyond love, phenomenal. So, love beef stroganoff. Major, major kudos. It was, it was awesome. Um, you? I know you're about to cook, right? About to cook some uh, some butternut squash gnocchi. Uh, not as gritty as beef stroganoff. Beef stroganoff is a pretty pretty gritty uh, pretty gritty meal. Um, but as always, we're gonna have some fun here. We're gonna talk about UVA, probably a little more history heavy uh, than preview heavy, but we're gonna give you the hits. Um, we'll start off with some poetry, starting with our guy Hokey Hack. He says, one win from a bowl. Let's show them this is our state or Commonwealth or Commonwealth. Some people freak out about that. Party in Fontaine. Now, for those of you that don't know, um, I would say it's Hokie Nation's worst kept secret. There is this, what is it, Pat? It's a, a parking lot, the Fontaine parking lot. What, what, is, what is this? Yeah, it's like a research center parking lot. I've parked there like probably two or three times over the years free parking not bad wow. 20 20 25 minute walk from the stadium and uh that's kind of just how it is you know that's how it is in whoville you can just it, uh, do a lot of things it. that you wouldn't get away with in other big boy football school environments <laughs> that's you know throw your throw your penny in the fontaine and wish for a hokey win on saturday the next haiku comes from B.F. Sharp, I, our guy Ben Sharp. Cavs can't hang with us. The cup stays with the Hokies. Let the bourbon flow. And the last one from Pete McGee. I got to tell you, it is so funny how how the um, – and I'm not – this is going to come off as I'm calling Pete McGee old. I'm not. Nobody gets – like I feel like the older you are, the more fired up you get for this football game. Like, like, like I think I think the most extreme, um, the most extreme anti UVA people I know in my life are some of our older uh, Twitter and Facebook followers and Al Jones. I actually would put Al Jones up there with anybody on uh, disliking UVA. So uh, Pete McGee, bunches of cream puffs. Cookie dough eating weenies. That's your argument. Well done, everybody. Great poetry. We had no submissions last time. We put out a message to step it up. Step it up, you did. So, fru fru, daiquiri jinkin, Ascart wearing, non alcoholic beer chugging <laughs> weenies. <laughs> Billy Ray, I will be, say, uh, it's going to be a fun I will too. say. I think your toxic trait, your toxic hokey trait, you know what I'm going to say it. I know. Your toxic hokey trait is that you don't hate UVA enough. I definitely don't. Um, and I'm glad we brought this up. We're, we're about to get into hokey history. This this is essentially what I'll say about it. Um, not, and I'm not saying I'm right. If I grew up in the state of Virginia and I would probably get it more. Um, I dislike UNC more because I feel like our back and forth with them has been more competitive and I don't have the context 
that a lot of people that grew up in the state of Virginia have. Um, for example, I went out to uh, Bull and Bones this weekend with Mike Holmes and uh, his parents. And somehow the subject of conversation came up, you know, how do you, uh, you know, what are some of the teams that you really dislike? And um, I had mentioned UNC first. I, I may as well have said that, you know, if I was picking a roommate, insert, you know, insert world dictator here would be my first choice. Um, I didn't say UVA. And they said, essentially, it's like, oh, man, well, there's nothing worse in the world than a saw. And I said, what's a... <laughs> What is a saw? Sorry, ass wahoo. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have uh, I don't have the context of it. And I think, look, I don't think that that's siloed necessarily for for me. I've I've been I can go on about this forever. I think that it would be better for Virginia Tech to have a more competent in-state rival. Now you can argue that JMU has become more competent than all of the schools in the state of Virginia. I just wish that they were a little bit more competitive. Have the games been closer as of recently? Yes. Um, so I don't have the historical context that comes with growing up in the state of Virginia or having parents that went to Virginia Tech uh, to understand it. I know that was a lot to say. I probably don't hate them as much because I didn't grow up with the context. However, I will ask you to lean in more. How about that? Is okay. it fair for me to that. ask you to lean in more? I can certainly do that. I'll go backwards hat mode, and I can do that. Let's do okay. it. Thank you. So we are going to take a trip down memory lane or lane stadium north lane here <laughs> on the Hokie history segment of the pod brought to you by Momento. Now, we didn't do a Momento from the NC State game. Um, I did upload one uh, this past weekend, but uh, wanted to highlight a few of the mementos here, a few of the memories. Uh, we've been talking about memento this season. It's essentially your digital fan scrapbook, your digital fan resume. You go to the game in person, you take a picture, you post it, you follow your friends, you get to track how many Virginia Tech games have I been to in the last 10 years? How many different venues have I seen the Hokies play in? You know, um, how many different teams have I seen in person? A lot of cool stats. Uh, they just updated it, and they're uh, going to be unrolling, rolling out uh, some more cool features. We'll have it in the article. We'll put it on Twitter X uh, tomorrow as well. But uh, I'll do some visuals, too, for the folks, the YouTube crowd. But <clears throat> we haven't played Virginia in two years, uh, obviously, Last year, due to the tragedy, uh, that game was canceled, um, so we did not play Virginia. But the 2021 game was the most recent game we did play. Uh, we've won two in a row, took the cup back in 2020, and then had quite a historic 2021 game that we'll talk about. This is the first. Uh, it's kind of crazy to think that the last time we played them, both teams had different head coaches also. Yeah. Coach Pry's first game in Charlottesville against Tony Elliott. Tony Elliott's first game against Virginia Tech. We will kick things off with 2021. There's a memento for you. Virginia Tech won 29 to 24. That is my freshman year roommate, Karsten, getting some love here. Uh, had a great time, and there was a lot to celebrate that day. Uh, Virginia Tech becomes bowl eligible, defeats UVA, and it was a big day from Tavion Robinson. It was a big day from Raheem Blackshear. It was a big day for Braxton Vermeister. We saw the hokey special trick play touchdown, uh, Blackshear, and a uh, touchdown reception by Vermeister. All three of them were making plays all day. Big play Trey. Um, was hurt at the end of the year, but did have a hands team uh, big time. On, I think it was an onsite kick recovery late in the game. Mm -hmm. The offensive performance by Virginia was suspect at times. They were led by Brennan Armstrong and their offensive coordinator, pure genius uh, moves by Robert and I, uh, where we saw a pass eight yards behind the line of scrimmage to a tackle. Uh, in the fourth quarter with the game on the line. Ooh. Truly one of the more 
suspect things that we have ever seen on a football field ever. Um, it's it's one of those plays, Pat, where if it works out, it's um what an amazing, crazy call to win a game on. And if it doesn't work out, which I would say your chances are 80% or higher, um, it is what a boneheaded, stupid call. Um, and that's what it turned out being. And you know, Robert and I was definitely – trying to repay those debts last weekend, knowing the last time he played a Virginia Tech team, uh, that happened. Um, We won the game. We rushed their field. uh, That's the the most embarrassing part of the whole thing. I got to tell you, I don't know. I don't know how many rivalries have have that happen. Um, And this is this is. I, this is a word that we've been debating all day. Objectively, that's embarrassing. I, I don't care what I don't care what team you root for. I don't care what your situation is. If you let another team run onto your field, um, and it was iconic. You had the guy in the on the jumbotron, basically the Bill McChain of UVA. Please refrain from rushing onto the field. I mean, the ship has sailed, my friend. Like there are there are 500, 600 people on the field. It's, this is happening. We saw JC Price smoking that UVA pack. We saw Terrell Smith flying the Virginia Tech flag at midfield oh. at Scott Stadium. One of the more iconic picks. I know what sometimes you see on X. You know what is the most? What is the hardest Virginia Tech pick you can find? I think that's one of the best ones that there is. It's up there, the J.C. Price cigar, uh, just an iconic moment of that 2021 year. Uh, I don't know if a team has ever had a better. Po- I don't know if a team has ever gone through like such a toxic. Like we need to move on from this coach. This coach is no longer here. We hate our offensive coordinator. We can't wait for everybody to no longer be in Blacksburg or most everybody. And then you end up with basically this, this commercial of how awesome your fan base and awesome you are compared to your in-state rival. It was looking back on it is, is pretty unbelievable. Honestly, if you you really think about it, really embarrassing for UVA, just truly embarrassing. The content from that day was unreal. Uh, you had, uh, I think his name's Parker Wood holding the Lane Stadium North sign. You had Carter Wyant uh, running up to the concession stand. There it is, Billy Ray. Had Carter running up to the concession stand in the late fourth quarter and sprinting down to give everyone GLTs. Good luck, tacos. They sure were. Good luck. And then you had Brad. You had. Uh, yeah, there's Drake with the cup. You had Brad Cornelson dial up 320 rushing yards. Uh, hopefully we see that on Saturday. That'd be awesome. Yeah, 2021 was a feature film. I always give you for this. This is just such an iconic photo. I mean, the fact the fact that you have Oscar Bradburn, who's graduated, make, meeting Drake DeUlis on the 50 yard line with in the, in a sea of a hundred fans, again, not at your home stadium. It, it's really, it's really hard to wrap your head around how embar- how embarrassing that is. Yeah. Super silly. Whew. <laughs> 2020, lean in. 2020, we crushed them 33 to 15. It's really shut down. Brennan Armstrong and uh, Khalil Herbert had a day. Mm-hmm. It was just an exciting game. Uh, getting the that was the game that Brent went Cooper. from that was a game that went from being it was supposed to be what was the order of that? It was supposed to be the first game of the it was supposed to be the last game of the season. COVID happens. It's supposed to be the first game of the season. It gets pushed to like the third game of the season. We can't play it, and then we are like, is this game even going to happen? And then it finally <laughs> gets played on the last game of the season. Yeah, I, I think I don't remember if it was before or after Clemson. Uh, the last week of the year, I think it was right after Clemson, but it was late, late. And yeah, the whole concern was, oh no, here comes another wave of COVID. Are we going to get the cup back in 2020 was the big concern. Mm -hmm. And thankfully we did. That game was played on December 12th, December 12th, 2020. So that was after the, that was after Clemson. Uh Uh-huh. Wow. That is 
That is nuts. Uh, and if you recall, for th some of you have seen it, some of you have not. We will not be posting it. Um, but there is an awesome, awesome video in the uh, in the locker room after that um, of the entire team celebrating. And again, it must have been a just an overall terrible season to have to go through. Um, and uh, it was a really cool moment for all of them to uh, for all of them to have that. I'm just trying to confirm that it was after Clemson. It was after Clemson. It was on December, yeah. December 12th. He had Clemson on December 5th, and that was coming off of Pat. We hadn't won a game since October 31st. We went winless in November, lost to Clemson on December 5th. You're four losses in a row, and you need to win this game to to get the cut back, and they did. Special. 2019 uh this is this is the uh just the tough afternoon for all of us had yeah really just a, a special day tailgating. Uh, horns down horns down from pat <laughs> no, that's, that's that's i think that's bryce giving the horn that might be me i don't know who's doing it uh, yeah that is me um virginia 39 virginia tech 30 uh plain and simple bryce perkins was the best player on the field that day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they just picked apart our defense. We couldn't, we didn't have an answer for him. Uh, some tough, tough turnovers uh, towards the end of the game as well. And uh, I think all of us remember how we felt that day. Yeah. I think there's a couple of things that need to be noticed, need to be said. Um, I've always said we disagree. I've always said that I thought UVA was top to bottom the more the more talented team, especially when you factor in that Caleb Farley did not play for the majority of that football game. Um, regardless, absolutely a winnable game. A couple of opportunities slipped through the cracks, whether it was stepping out of bounds before the first down, whether it was, uh, I believe we missed a field goal late. Uh, one thing that has to be said about this game was – and granted, it was the best UVA team that they had in probably two decades. It was extremely loud. Uh, the environment that UVA put on for that football game was, I don't know if they've had a crowd like that or a support like that ever since I've been following UVA football. Um, I was blown away by how many people were at that game and the scene after the game. Um, but if you look at that team, man, I mean, Bryce Perkins, unbelievable uh and then you look at the rest of that roster joey blunt bright uh bryce hall charles snowden joe reed um guys that are in the nfl right now and playing um really really good uva team really really good virginia tech team and when i say that i wish and think that it would be healthy for the overall state of virginia football the entire state and the acc these are the kind of games i want to be playing there is a segment of the fan base, which I understand. And there's a segment of a lot of fan bases that feel that way. But when you remove yourself from the rivalry, I want this game to mean more than UVA is horrible. Virginia tech is good. And the game just basically means who's winning the Commonwealth cup. Get us back to where this game means something. Um, I'd really love it to be that way. Really good football game. I do. I have a couple of things on this. Um, I would, I would take, on a neutral field and in Scott Stadium, I would take our roster against their roster. Mm -hmm. uh, Virginia Tech turned it over four times. They did. Uh, we mm -hmm. had 25 first downs. They had 14 first downs. We dominated time of possession. And uh, it really kind of came down to some of those possessions. I mean, they outscored us 19-3 to three in the fourth mm -hmm. quarter, and that was it. It was really a, a tale of one quarter versus the other three. Mm -hmm. um, another point I wanted to make is that and I don't know how accurate this is, but I think it is. It says it on this memento and it says it on ESPN.com. The attendance was 86% full that day, 52,619 people. No I way. find that hard to believe. No way. Um, but, you know, you look at this picture and it actually does look like there's some empty seats up top um, in the corners. So come on, Virginia. You guys can do better. You have an un unbelievable team. You make it to the ACC championship, sell out the stadium. Um, one last thing I think you have to mention from that game. I say it, it probably drives people crazy. It's awesome. Awesome. Awesome game. It was a beautiful day. Three thirty kick. No, it was a nooner. Oh, it was, it was a nooner. Okay. Nooner, nooner on kick. ABC. Yep. It was, uh, as fun that I've had in a loss 
uh, beautiful, beautiful day. Riley Wyatt was still on crutches, I think. She was crutching around, um, just making it happen. We all kind of um, meandered down there. I, I met it, ran into Diakite from the UVA team, confirmed, very tall. Um, so, uh, cool day. Fun day. Wish we won. Yeah, they sucked. <laughs> 2018. A lot of folks' favorite favorite uh, favorite UVA game over the last decade. Hey, if you guys are uh, watching on YouTube, comment below your favorite win over Virginia uh, in the last ten years. Would love to know uh, what your favorite win was. But um, the mementos we're sharing are all from Scott Stadium. We're doing that. That's the team here. But um, 2018, the cup is going nowhere, Mikey. The classic John Laser call overtime. You had the uh, the Bryce Perkins fumble. Emmanuel Belmar recovers it. Trey Turner has the one-handed touchdown catch over Bryce Hall. That was just just picturesque. And he had a blocked punt where Javon Quillen scored the touchdown. You had the Ryan Willis to Dalton Keene in the fourth quarter. Scared money, don't make money play. Where he just <laughs> it was 500 dead or alive. And thank God Dalton Keene went up and got it. Man. Uh, Willis threw a pick that game right before halftime and chased the guy down, tackled him at, at the uh, at the five kind of shades of is it 2005? Jimmy Williams uh, running down UVA running back like right in the uh, in the red kinda zone, kind of like Red, kind of like Reggie Floyd against Pittsburgh in 2017. Shades of that for sure. Uh, that night was my last good memory at Big Al's as well. We took wow. we uh, we met R. everyone R. at Big Al's with the Commonwealth Cup and. Uh, had a hilarious picture of Ryan Willis holding the cup up. Um, the last time we played UVA at home with fans. Can we talk about that? Like there is a there is a there is a class of um of young men and women who are gonna walk across the stage this uh April or May, forget what day graduation is. And they never saw Virginia Tech play Virginia at home. Never happened. Um, they came into school. 2018, 2019, they said, wow, this is going to be so fun. I can't, I can't wait to do this. I, I can't wait for my birthright as a Virginia Tech fan to just not lose to UVA at home ever. Um, we never lost to UVA at home. We also never got to see it. So that's a shame. If you're a senior, come to the game this weekend. Um, but I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, my poor sister is in that group. Uh, we'll hopefully get her down for next year. I'll try to try to get a Finn family Thanksgiving around the, uh, the Mid Atlantic in Virginia or Charlotte. Uh, 2017, really little to write home about this day. Uh, we win 10-0. Pretty what, a, what an unfun football game. Pretty boring football game, but there were a few highlights. Uh, I do remember Tremaine Edmonds just playing out of his mind this evening. Um, just you know, having a Peyton Wilson type game that we saw this past weekend. Um, Tremaine was in the backfield all day and just looked like a difference baker. This was also the Eric Kuma stiff arming Quinn Blanding game where he made Quinn, Quinn Blanding his you know what. Uh, shutout in Scott Stadium is always fun. Was this also the game where Greg Stroman lit up the quarterback um, when he did like that? Oh, I'm going to yes. pretend to run out of bounds, but I'm going to yes. stay in bounds. And he blew him up. And then the UVA coaches were freaking out. That was pretty awesome, too. Yeah, I want to say it was Matt Johns. Pretty Somebody. Sure. Some sure. tall, white pocket passer. Um, whoever it was, I got absolutely blown up. It was either 17 or, or 15. Mm -hmm. 2016, just really, Ooh. really just destroyed them 52 to 10 this was like the sam rogers game sam rogers senior day 2016 wow. was an awesome year had a moto block and touchdown had that chuck clark someone picked off a pass and then there was a lateral i think it was i think it was terrell and and chuck clark but this was just pure dominance mm -hmm. and how it should be every single time we go up against uh, the virginia cavaliers 2015 we should win 52 to 10 every time. Every time. <laughs> every time. I mean, obviously, I say that slightly tongue-in-cheek, but th that was that was what the standard was at that point, and right. that's what we'd like to get back to. 2015, Frank's last game in, in Scott Stadium. What was it, 70 degrees? Yeah, it was awesome. It was pretty uh, – 
pretty awesome weather this day. If you're looking at the visual, 23 to 20 Virginia Tech, you had an Adonis Alexander INT to seal the game. You had a Michael Brewer to Isaiah Ford touchdown here. I'm going to say Trayvon McMillan had a solid game. Ryan Malik had a real long catch and run as well. And we 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 actually stormed the end zone. Uh, there are pictures of a, of a few of us on the field after this one as well. Um, but yeah, you win a last minute game like that, and uh, you might you might get some folks running down from the hill into the end zone. Do you remember 2014? The thing I remember most about 2014 was, first of all, the turnaround, um, the race to get bowl eligible. And you have the chance to. I know you're going to talk about the game. But uh, a lot of clips from UVA. I mean, look, it was Mike London's kind of like, look, Mike London needs to make something happen here. Uh, you have all these recruits. Um, can they finally beat Virginia Tech? Can it finally happen? Um, UVA came out midfield, running through stretch lines, talking a lot of talk. Um, oh, yeah. And uh, – a really, really good football game as well. I know you'll get into the details of the game here. Really cold. Friday night, Friday night freezing cold. Come back early from Thanksgiving break. Uh, Bucky Hodges, Matt, monster game. Cam Phillips, monster game. Two touchdowns for Bucky. One of them was off a CJ Revis blocked punt. The other one was a game-winning reception uh, from Michael Brewer. And then what I also remember from this game was Ken E. Canham and Daddy Nicholas just completely destroying Grayson Lambert in the fourth quarter. So if you remember, um, for you Hokie fans, this has always been kind of like, a, what's wrong with Daddy Nicholas? Why is he always why is he always hurt? Coincidentally, Kenny Canham got hurt because the the pure inertia of of that sandwich uh, probably knocked the wind out of him. But Daddy Nicholas basically played that entire year. He had like multiple broken fingers on his hand. If you look, if you go back and you look, uh, it didn't affect him on the Ron Cherry karate chop. Against <laughs> I, was, I was right about to bring up the Ron Cherry. But, but um, he was always hurt or laying on the field. You saw it a lot in our bowl game. Uh, he had like three or four completely broken, fractured fingers and played the entire uh, year that that way. So that's why he was always, always slow to get up. But what a, what a fun win that was. Similar to uh, to Greg Nozal. You know what that is, Billy Ray? Playing with broken fingers? What is That's that? Grit. That's grit. It's grit. 2013. This is the last one I have in the uh, in the photo reel here. Where is it? We're gonna we're gonna pull it up. Did I upload it? I might I might not have uploaded this one. All right, you guys are gonna have to wait to see it on the uh, the Twitter timeline, but. Went to Charlottesville with Karsten and Jack Conti. Got the win, 16-6. Mm-hmm. This was my first time ever in Charlottesville. Uh, nice game from the defense and a touchdown from Trey Edmonds on uh, on this November afternoon. Then we'll, we'll kind of do rapid fire here. 2012, pick from Anton Exum and a game-winning kick from Cody Jernell. Sealed the win in Blacksburg with the Foghorn Leghorn helmets and the orange uniforms probably the worst helmets we've ever worn if there's a worse helmet that we've worn drop a comment below let us know 2011 38 0 bro in charlottesville this was for the coastal logan thomas just went off Uh, marcus davis had a good game david wilson dominated everybody dominated this uh, james gale when you score 38 points, you can't you can't give enough props out. 2010 ran it real well, 37 to seven. This was the 2010 senior send off of Tyrod and um, Davon Morgan and Danny uh, Danny Cole. No, they played in 2011. Danny Cole, one more year. Just a bunch of guys who really just knew how to whip up on the Virginia Cavaliers. Uh, Ryan Williams and David Wilson had an awesome day here as did Tyrod 2009, kind of same thing. Ryan Williams explodes onto the scene. David Wilson has a day pro combats, probably maybe the best uniform we've ever worn on the road. Nike Pretty football. awesome. All whites looked unbelievable, sharp, unbelievably sharp. Um, this was just a, a lot of fun. 42 to 13 domination 2008. 
8, 17, 14. Virginia Tech clinches the coastal big time day for the lunch pail defense, big time day for the wild turkey offense. 2007 in Charlottesville, coastal championship on the line. Sean Glennon went out there and and played absolutely incredible. People hate on Sean Glennon. Glennon had an awesome game against Virginia. Uh, his last uh, his last game in Charlottesville in 2007, and he also balled out in the ECC championship the very next week and won MVP honors. So when you think of Sean Glennon, think of those two games. He, he brought us some hardware. Um, Tyrod, two touchdowns that day as well. 2007, this was the year that Chris Long was a – he was a unanimous All-American that year, was he not? Yep, this was Chris Long's senior day, last day mm-hmm. in college. Um, Jameel Sewell was their starting quarterback. Chris Ellis was crushing him all day. Uh, really just domination by Tech this day. Um, we were the more physical team. We were the grittier team. Played complimentary ball. 06, shut them out, 17-0. Eddie Royal up the sideline. Cool to talk about two shutouts here in this mix. And then uh, we'll throw it all the way back. We'll do one more. 1995. As you guys know, if you have been a Hokie fan for a long time, this game was essentially a play-in game for this for the Sugar Bowl. I know that they had uh, – I mean, UVA was ranked number 13. Tech was number 20. We go in – and beat the Cavaliers 36 to 29. Uh, you had Virginia Tech who won the Big East, and then UVA was the co ACC champion. Uh, but we had come back from a 2019, or excuse me, a 29 to not, uh, 14 deficit late in the game. Drucken Miller hits Jermaine Holmes, and then the pick six to seal the game by Antonio Banks, um, J.C. Price, and Cornell Brown balled out this game. And uh, Was this the game that the uh, trainer for UVA tried to trip um, Tried to trip Antonio Banks? Yeah, and I think it's la- – I, I just saw the Ox VT video. I think his last name, name – Geek. Geek, Geeks. Yeah. And they call him the, the Geek of the Week for, uh, yeah. for his mischievous, mischievous behavior. Yeah. Um, Shout out to that guy for not winning. I mean, I was literally, I was reading about him today, catching up with uh, with Joe Geek. You can't see it, but uh, yeah, I was whatever. reading about him. <laughs> but uh, that's ninety five. Got to talk about ninety five. I, you know, I was let's see, November eighteenth. I was not a year old yet, so my mom was pregnant to... with me. There you go. Congrats. Uh, <laughs> Two thousand. So yeah, fun fun storylines here, at least of recent memory. 2012, 2014, 2015, 2018, 2021, 2020, and 2023, the Commonwealth Cup has bowl eligibility implications uh, going on. So pretty crazy. I also noticed for only one time has this game gone into overtime. That was the backwards pass to an offensive lineman extravaganza. But what a fun Obviously, more fun for us. That is the only time it's ever gone overtime. The backwards pass? Was that an overtime? No. What was the overtime game? 2001. The overtime was 18. What? 2018. Was, uh, yeah. The fumble The fumble game. Um, that is the only time this game has ever been in overtime. Um, thank you for the save there. Um, but the only time this game has ever gone into, uh, ever gone into overtime. But a fun... Fun rivalry. I think I was talking about this with uh again with the Holmes family. The the difference in culture of the students that go there and the programs that play in it is so like like what other schools can you think of that have such a cultural difference? The only one that I can really think of, and and unfortunately Darby Taylor pointed this out to me. Being an old Miss fan actually means that I am rooting for the UVA of Mississippi. Uh, which was hard to swallow, and it in, in, is true. Um, UV, uh, UVA and Ole Miss do like to show up to games dressed up like they are Pee Wee Herman. Um, 
at football games. But I can't really – how many other schools can you think of that have that kind of rivalry that have such a stark, stark cultural difference? You could put it on NC State and Carolina. I think mm -hmm. if you want to talk similarities, that might be the most similar one uh, that's out there. Maybe no, I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to compare us to that school. I don't want to compare Virginia Tech to this school, so I'm not going to do it. Well, what is it for fun? <laughs> Michigan and Michigan State. I don't want to do that. Uh, I mean, yeah, pretty kind of similar. No, not, no, no, no. I, I, I do not want to compare us to Michigan State at all. Um, we're gonna put that one wow. to bed. I didn't wow. even wake that one up. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe Texas and Texas A and M. If we're the Texas A and M and they're Texas, I don't know if that's. It's it's kind of hard. I mean, I, I think the UVA NC State one is really just Texas. That's a good one. Uh, easy comp. That's a good one. Um. Like you look at Auburn, Alabama, how different are those two schools? They both get drunk. They both, you know, party pretty hard. Um, is that, is that really. the, uh, the criteria? Party? Yeah. <laughs> they both, they both, they both kind of get after. Kids, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Virginia, uh, Virginia fans wear suits to games and, uh, you know, the games that they show up to. Um, a lot of crew necks, what I noticed. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Very, I mean, there's, like, just, there's just not, there's just not a lot of, there's not a lot that you can say, like, like everyone's like, are, like, you look at some of the best rivalries in sports, Michigan, Ohio State, we hate them. Are you really that different? You both live in kind of subpar states. I mean, it's cold, you know, Army, Navy, you guys are both serving our country. Are you really that different? I don't really think so. I know I'm getting a lot of people angry. Um, Florida, Florida State, are you really that angry? Um, that might uh, is that a good comp? That might be a decent comp. I don't know. No, I don't. I don't like comparing us to Florida State either. Our academics are our academics are. All right, we don't need to split. Lot. We don't need to split hairs here. Probably I'm talking a lot about, are you putting, than, uh, probably are a you lot putting a bow tie than. on before the game or not? <laughs> that's that's my question. Um, okay, so that, that's that's the criteria. Thirty-seven minutes yeah. in, we haven't talked about this football game that's actually being played on Saturday, um, but. In all, fun rivalry, cultural difference. We like to win it. They would probably like to win it. They lose it a lot. Storylines. Virginia Tech working to get bowl eligible. Coach Pry and his presser today. What did he say, Pat? Coach Pry and his presser, there's always pressure to beat UVA. I mean, ain't that the truth? Said it in media day. This is the flagship school in the state of Virginia. There is no question about it. So, I mean, got to go show it. Virginia it's has the school. An it's my home. Virginia has an opportunity to play spoiler. I'll mention this now. Um, Anthony Calandria, for better or for worse, after his win over Duke, he says, after this game versus Tech, after we beat Virginia Tech, this program is going to shoot up and everyone in the country is going to know about us. They got an opportunity to play spoiler. Um, fun game. Stoke that, stoke that flame, AC. Mm -hmm. Hey, listen, as a this, yeah, this is a subjective opinion. However, uh, I, I like the moxie out of the kids. course. You know, course. he's from Florida, so I don't know, you know, if he knows much about this rivalry or kind of, you know, the track record. I think we've won 21 out of 23. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not 23 years old. He's not 21 years old. He's actually no. probably 18 and we've won 17 out of 18. So that being said, um, I, 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 do, I like the moxie, but um, I also like the contribution, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's like Morgan Moses in 2011. I remember two years ago when I committed to UVA and shocked the world. And then James Gale says, I remember two weeks ago when I hit you with the stutter step for the sack. <laughs> need more of that. I like the chat. I like the jib jab. I like the, uh, the riffing a little bit, you know, throw, throw a few stones. Let's get it going. Uh, UVA coming off a 30 to 27 win versus Duke in front of a crowd of 36,000 people. Virginia is eight and three against the spread this year. They have lost a lot of close games. Um, you know, microcosm here. You look at the NC State loss. 
they had in September, where essentially they had pretty much won the game. I don't want to say that, but they Calandria takes his helmet off and does the Superman pose, and then you know they're getting penalized on the kickoff, and NC State goes right down the field and, and scores. Mm. But they've lost a lot of games in the final minutes here. Um, so interested to see how that plays out on Saturday. Fontel Mines returns home. Fontel Mines did play college ball at Virginia. That's a storyline in itself right there. And the third storyline, at least the third storyline of its kind this year, you had Charlie Wiles in Lane Stadium last weekend. You had Justin Harper, who coaches wide receivers at Old Dominion, uh, grace the sideline of Lane Stadium early in September as well. This is the first time that Fontel Mines goes home to Charlottesville where he played. And the last storyline is our friends at Roback because it is pretty much the holiday season here. And you guys have, you know, folks in your family, folks in your friend circles, maybe significant others who want to get your hands on one of these, the Berg from Roback or the Commonwealth. It's upstairs in the closet. Uh, the Virginia state themed polos from our friends at Roback and Roback is a Charlottesville company. The cat's out of the bag. If you didn't know that a few Darden guys are the founders, they're good people. We're not going to hold it against them. They make great stuff. Okay. Um, head on over to Roback.com R H O B A C K.com slash sons VT. Cause that's how we can get credit. And we want you guys to, to help us. Uh, Suns VT, uh, roback.com slash Suns VT, 20% off your orders. I think over the next few weeks, I don't know when it's ending, but um, take advantage of it before they are sold out of the Berg and of the Commonwealth. Please use that link. We really, really, really appreciate it. And we also appreciate our guys at Roback. Shout out to the team. So BRM, it is T-I-M-E to T-A-L-K about UVA's offense. <laughs> What are we thinking about our guy, AC, the freshman from St. Petersburg? Anthony Calandria, absolutely one of the most hilariously awesome, bad, entertaining players to watch. Um, he, uh, I, I mean, hilariously awesome and bad players to watch. He is boomer bust. I think he is going to be a fantastic player, um, whether he continues his, his career at UVA or whether he goes on elsewhere. We are in 2023 of college football. You never know how this works out. Um, over his last three games, he has been hilariously awesome for UVA. He has six touchdowns, two interceptions, and 980 yards of total offense. Um, the area of opportunity I look at regarding Mr. Calandria and his starting offensive line is UVA does not protect the quarterback very well. They have given up 37 sacks in 11 games, which is the second worst in the ACC. So pin your ears back. Our Look. M two A D L P message to know. all defensive line players. We haven't had any pressure on the quarterback in three weeks. Zero. No pressure. This is your opportunity. You are playing against UVA. We hate them. They don't protect their quarterback. Get after the quarterback. Message to APR. Uh, take some. Take some notes out of the James Gale school of stutter step spin move for the sack. This is the opportunity. Calandria, I think that's a really great way to describe him. The NC State game was certainly pure entertainment. I mean, the, the guy, you could say he's a baller. Um, you could also say that he is a gunslinger. And, you know, Johnny Manziel, Brett Favre, not as good. But similar body, body, body language, similar, similar swag, kind of, kind of the same. It's one of those guys you're like, I really hope he's not here all four years. <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, he delivers some dimes, and then other plays he's doing this, and you know, it's like a Helen Keller pass. But the, um, he's a good football player. And he played really well last week against a solid Duke defense. 21 of 30 for 278 passing yards, three touchdowns, no picks. Ran for 66 yards on nine carries. Um, has over 200 pass attempts for the year. I know him and Tony Musket were kind of 
kind of going back and forth earlier in the year. Calandria almost beat JMU too. I know that was kind of the, the first game where he bust out onto the scene. Uh, but he has ran for 237 yards on the year as well. Long of 30, 3.8 yards per carry. So it's not like he's, you know, it's not like he's a Kyron Drones out there, but he is a threat and he does have some elusiveness. Does he remind you of Drake May at all? Does he play like Drake May a little bit? No, he looks like a rich white kid. That's why you uh that's why you're making that comparison. <laughs> he is rich, he looks rich, he's blonde, he has kind of a kitty haircut. That's 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 where the confusion comes. Maybe I don't know. Maybe it's maybe it's the fact that he can run with the football. Maybe like, wide receivers. Um, they have two of the top five in the ACC. Uh, fifth in the conference in receiving yards at 722 is Malachi Fields. Um, but the conversation has largely been dominated by Malik Washington. Malik Washington, he is the most productive receiver in the ACC. He has 1,311 yards. Wow. 119 yards per game and almost nine catches per game. That is most by 28 catches in our conference. He has almost 500 more yards than the second leading receiver in the ACC. Um, who is it? Second in the ACC. It is Restrepo playing for Miami. Absolute stud as well. Um, but man, um, Malik Washington is a, is going to be a handful. Yeah. So you are saying that they have their own KC Concepcion, but he wears blue and coach price said it. He said, he's a, he's the most when he's catching balls short to intermediate and breaking tackles. And he thinks that, uh, you know, between Washington and Calandra, you got two guys who are tough to tackle Washington's built like a tailback. You can't arm tackle that guy. Can't. So, I mean, he's 5'8". He's, you know, stocky but quick. Um, so we're going to have our hands full with this guy. Seeing what happened last week with Casey Concepcion seems, seems to be uh, that they have their own. Malik Washington against Duke, eight catches on nine targets, 112 yards, which is 14.0 yards per reception. Two scores on the day. That is pretty much a textbook day and a standard afternoon for Malik Washington here this year. So I definitely am a little bit a uh, little bit shaky on that, considering you know he's not the only guy that Calandria can get the ball to. Him and Malachi Fields are are um, are going to be a dangerous duo. I have some concerns with. Our defense this week, um, the second and third third lines of our defense definitely are banged up. Kelly Lawson was pretty much inactive last week. He had five. He had five snaps all game. Uh, Coach Price said he is questionable for Saturday, and then there were three other guys who were in the blue limited contact during practice. I saw Andy Bitter put this out. Obviously, Kelly Lawson, and then. Three safeties, Nasir Peoples, Jalen Stroman, and Jalen Jones, all in limited contact. Hopefully that's just yesterday and today, and uh, they're getting involved later in the week, and we're getting them back to full strength. Um, but he did say Derek Canteen and Mose Phillips were both running with the ones at safety. Also noted by Coach Pry, you got George Balance, uh, true freshman walk-on. You got Asen Stevens. Uh, a true freshman. I think George Balance is a true freshman. He might be a he might be a uh, a richer freshman, but they could get some looks here on Saturday as well. Do not be surprised if we see either of them uh, based on our depth on Saturday. Really, uh, just you know, watching the NC State tape. Got to watch out for that pre-snap motion. Got to be wary and conscious of misdirections that really doomed uh, our second line. Last weekend, defensively, Billy Ray, um, it sounds like we are more optimistic on what we can do. Yeah, I mean, the they're league. not good at what we're good at. They have a terrible rush defense, giving up 178 yards per game. That's 112th in all of college football, which is bad. That is not good. Um, they've given up 40 points three times against Tennessee, Maryland, and Georgia Tech. 
And one of my favorite stats, their leading tackler is Jonas Sanker. He is a junior safety from Charlottesville. He has 65 tackles. So you are making tackles far away from the line of scrimmage, which means you are probably getting past the line of scrimmage, which means you are probably giving up quite a few yards. So I'm going to get into this in, in my keys to the game. Just do what you can do what you do. Uh, this matches up well for what we want to do. We played against NC State. We played against Louisville. Those were two of uh, two of the better uh, run defenses in the country. Uh, UVA is not that. Uh, Basil Tootin coming off of two carries last week. He should be well rested, so he should uh, be ready to go and run all over this uh, Cavalier defense. Yeah. They are giving up 33.7 points per game, which is in – the triple digits. You mentioned their rush defense is in the triple digits as far as breaking down their passing defense and opponent passing yards per game. If we pull it up real quick here, 77th. So they're allowing 238 yards per game through the air. No bueno. Uh, overall, uh, defensively. Pat, you say that? We don't need to throw the – we should not throw the football more than 20 or 22 times this week. Um, this this game should be determined by the offensive line, the running backs, and the feet and quads of uh, Kyron Drones. Uh, what a weird <clears throat> way to put that, but I would love uh, love to see us run wild over, uh, oh, over UVA. So that tweet today, the, uh, the Vic and uh, Manning thing, the foot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Total defense. Virginia surrenders 420 yards per game. That's good for 106. Poor. Uh, yeah, I, I think you nailed it, Billy Ray. I think uh, run the football. Do what we did in 2021. You know, throw some trick, trick plays in there to open it up a little bit. But, I mean, let's take the Boston College game plan and do the exact same thing. Um, they are not as uh not they, they have multiple dimensions on offense i'd say um it's not a, the castellano show um they do have a few more weapons for sure with washington and with uh colandria but i'm with you now special teams, special teams who we got uh who we got special teams um if you're poking fun at this stop uh, I've seen a couple people poke fun at this. Uh, UVA has a 34-year-old kicker named Matt Gain Ganyard, 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 Ganyard. Uh, he is a business school graduate who then went on to the Marine Corps and served as a Cobra pilot, a uh, Cobra helicopter pilot. That's actually what Jackson, my younger brother, is training to do. Really cool story. Um, ended up walking onto the football team. Said, "I want to compete for the job. I just don't want to be the old guy that is kind of like the you know uh, spirit animal of the team." Um, Really, really cool story. Check it out if you have not. Matt Ganyard, 34-year-old former veteran that is on the football team. Um, however, I, I do want to point out that their starting kicker, who I don't have his name written down, like an Will, idiot. Will Betridge. Will Betridge. Thank you. Pretty good from distance. So he's 7 of 9 from 20 to 29 yards. He's 9 of 10 from 30 to 39 yards. And he's 8 for 11 from 40 to 49 yards. So the guy's got a leg guy can kick it pretty far um so that's what i have for their special teams now it's a lot of field goals to, it is a lot of field goals keys to the game this is a must win as far as i'm concerned um we can get into the semantics of there was a tweet that went out um, basically about, okay, if Virginia Tech finishes five and seven, is this a success or is this failure? Um, I have gotten on in the preseason before and said that it's, it's, it's rather foolish to come on in you know the, the preseason or the middle of the season or whatever and say, okay, well, we need to win this many games or I'm going to be angry because uh, every story – Every season has its story. Every season has its ups and downs. Every season. I, I've looked at this season as two completely separate seasons. And every season starts at Dick's. Don't forget that. That, that, is, that is true. Um, you got to win this game. Um, the opportunity for extra practices through bowl season, the opportunity to make good on making sure that you are the flagship school in the state of Virginia. I said that six games is is a huge milestone for this team. Find a way to get there. I think to do that, we need to play our game. What is our game, Billy Ray? Run the damn ball, keep the other offense off the field. 
suffocate them on offense, pressure the quarterback, force turnovers. I look at our losses uh, in the second chapter, uh, the second act of this season, and let's look at some of the games that we lost. What happened? I think we got cute in the games that we lost against Marshall. Still figuring out, but we found out that we were a running football team and we went away from the run in the back half of that game. Florida State obviously outmatched athletically, um, but we came out thinking we were a passing team. I think we passed the ball four out of the first seven or eight plays. Um, get yourself behind, fight back, come up short. NC State, two carries for Tootin. Didn't run the ball. I understand we only had the ball for 17 plays in the first half, but still, um, that's the way you're going to get back into the football game. And then at Louisville, we just straight up, didn't get off the bus. Um, that's what happened at Louisville. So play your game, bring the aggression, bring the effort, the attitude, and the toughness, and run through their face. That is my that are those are my keys to the game. Get the time of possession back on our side. We need that. You cannot win a football game when. The opposition has the ball 2x more than you do, as we saw last weekend. Uh, Virginia cannot run the ball very well. Uh, I know they're going to leverage Washington as much as they can, but I don't see him being that much of a threat in the run game. Keep our banged up defense off the field. Mm Mm-hmm. Essential. As much as I love when we score touchdowns, we can't have we can't have too many drives where we are just having you know one two or three plays and all these big plays and all of a sudden our our banged up uh, tired defense is going back out onto the field like we just talked about last night on the NC State post game pod. We need to play complementary football that involves all three phases of the game. You know, I would I would love to see and I saw this in the comments of Andy's article on TSL and I loved it. It was hey. We have two of our own Concepcions or Malik Washingtons. Their names are Jalen Lane and Xavion Turner Bradshaw. Let's use them. <laughs> okay. Hey, wait, what a great idea. I mean, <laughs> XTB, get him involved. Jalen Lane, get him more touches. And, oh, by the way, we have this guy named Basil Tootin who is freaking awesome and wants to stamp his name on the Commonwealth Cup legacy. So let's get it going. Last but not least, there's a guy named Antoine Pellerylin who's had a great year on the edge this year. Here's the thing. He only has double-digit sacks. And this is his opportunity to get those – did I say double? I meant single. He did. <laughs> he only has nine. Get that double-digit sack. Mm-hmm. Uh, APR, be a menace on Saturday. Get in the backfield. Uh, disturb, cause chaos, and make Anthony Calandria regret – saying those crazy things to Mike Barber after the Duke game on Saturday. Those are my keys to the game here at BRM. Hokies are favored by three points as it currently stands. Uh, the weather is going to be cold. It's gonna I'm be not cold. excited about the weather. I got to be honest. Yeah. I'm not no, excited. It's going to be cold. It's going to be cold. Bundle up. Um, pack your... Um, Pack your flannel lined jeans, pack your sweatshirts, maybe throw on a jacket over the sweatshirt. It's going to be chilly. Um, score prediction. I'm going to go 31 27. Um, Virginia Tech is the more talented team, top to bottom, across the roster. I said it before you have to win this game. You cannot, Virginia Tech cannot live in a world where in the last two, two years you are one and three versus Marshall, UVA, and ODU. That is a disaster. And um, that, quite frankly, cannot be uh, where we where we sit. That it can't happen. Cannot happen. So um, find a way to win. Another little tidbit: we have stats and info working on this right now. If, 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 if Virginia Tech loses this game, has there ever been a team that has won five games by 17 points or more and not made a bowl game? That is my question to you. That is the situation. Um, that is the stat. So find a way. Find a way. Let's, to let's not be that team. Score prediction for Saturday. Um, a lot on the line here, boys and girls. You know, some of us went to the bank 
early on in August and saw yeah. that we, we saw that Virginia Tech win total over five and a half. And we saw plus 150. And we rubbed our hands together and said, wow, talk about awesome value and talk about a year that we can do it. And uh, got 60 minutes to prove that Virginia Tech is better than five and a half wins mm -hmm. on Saturday. So a lot is riding on this, Billy Ray. A lot is riding on it. I have very similar score to you, uh, 30 to 27. Take the over. I think the over-under is 51 or 52. Um, I do think the over will hit on Saturday. Maybe the weather might have something to do with that if uh, if it doesn't, but um, I think it's just going to be like cloudy and you know low 40s. So bundle up. Hopefully it's not that windy. I mean, this will be the coldest game we've played by about 10 or 15 degrees uh, this season. Hokies haven't really had to deal with the uh, deal with the uh, elements that much. I know it was kind of nasty at Marshall, wasn't it? If I'm remembering correctly, was it? No, Marshall was, it was like a, no. Marshall was like a gorgeous day. Uh, then we haven't had to deal with anything that was that was uh, insignificant. Yeah, I mean, um, it, it never really rained that much during gameplay of Wake Forest and Purdue. Um, Purdue, the whole game was uh, the game started back up after the mm -hmm. rain stopped. Mm -hmm. letters from the lunch pail it's funny we didn't get any uh we didn't get letters from the lunch pail we got we did get letters from the lunch pail they didn't end with a question mark they ended with an exclamation mark which is which is encouraged fine. Fine. Really. oh completely fine um first one from joey nimmo just keep swimming just keep swimming just keep winning just keep winning uh defense wins this game can't let a freshman quarterback walk all over us i agree I agree. That would be awesome. Um, defense on paper is a top 30 defense in the country. Go out and prove it. I really – I mean, it would be awesome if defense wins us this game. I think our running game needs to win us this game, though. Mm -hmm. I think our offense needs to win us this game. And I'm not saying this is going to be a scoring competition, but I am just scared – about our defensive effort here on yeah. Saturday due to some of the guys who might be out or who are banged up. Um, well, could, and could be a and Calandria, Calandria is such a variable, you know, um, Calandria is such a, he's going to make the game weird. Um, Phil Dracovic did not make the game weird. Schrader did not make the game weird. Wake Forest's quarterback made the game awesome. Um, this is going to be a guy who just kind of does stuff that you can't really practice for. Uh, it's going to be a lot of backyard football craziness. You know what he and is? He's he's a no no yes guy. He is. <laughs> he absolutely is the no no yes guy. That is who he is. Blacksburg Country Club bookie with the submission. Wow. Give me the resurrection of Cavman animations this weekend. Need it badly. Uh, the Cav Man and the Hokey Bird, all those animations, get in the stadium early <laughs> because mm -hmm. I think I think they do it before kickoff. It's just so weird, um, and we could we could do a whole thing on on UVA culture, and I guess we will on the post game pod as well. We'll be in a lot better spirits after a win. We'll we'll take the deeper dive after a win, of course, but. Just some of their game day stuff is just so goofy. First of all, their scoreboard is like the size of like when you go to the dentist and they have like one of those tiny TVs in the waiting room and you're like squinting. You're like, I can't even tell if that's sports center or the news. Um, and, you know, they do the, the whole sway thing and, and the New Year's Eve song. Um, I mean, Pat, I didn't hear anything you just said because you basically you basically just had your Calandria moment. You said when we record this podcast after a win um we can talk about the culture so you did say that wait what you you said when we win this game and we talk about this game oh, next okay. week so pat calandria over here just dropping uh i mean we both we both just predicted virginia tech to win the football we, game we, we so, did you spoke um, in future tense it's out there it's happened i mean i'm, I'm just letting you know it's it's pat it's pat calandria finn for the rest I of mean, the weekend uh, and imagine listening to the Sons of Saturday podcast and thinking that these guys are going to predict us to lose. Not in a million no, years. No. Well, 
No, I'm not going to predict us to lose. You basically just said, hey, the title of the podcast on Monday is going to be Virginia Tech defeats UVA. Let's talk about how weird their culture is. I'm here for it, Pat. I've just never heard you drop your cojones on the table like that before. That's right. Well, you know, we're the flagship program in the state. Mm -hmm. Tom Persinger says, keys to the game, hammer AC and lock down Washington. Play loose, free, and fast. Foot loose and fancy free on offense. How about it, Tommy P? If you could bring back one helmet, which one would you choose? I'd go with either of the three Matt Maroon ones myself. So Tom added a picture of... I mean, this is a, an impressive collection here. If I could, if I could copy it and drag it into our thing, I'm gonna do that. Uh, I can't. We'll we'll retweet it. But I'm, I'm looking taking, at it right now. I'm I taking would, Matt Maroon. Yes. Um. This is tough. I love the Matt Maroon. I love the chrome orange. Mmm. And I love the. Uh, I love the. It's it's like basically right in the middle. White, chrome orange, matte maroon. Um, the ones that were Navy, the ones that Navy had. Yes, uh, Don Bosco wore those against us at Primus Catholic. We did beat them, um, but they wore those helmets and they were sick. Um, honorable so mentions. Good. Honorable mentions of this helmet collection. Hokey you're stone helmet. One that I hate. I know you're going to do it. Hokey stone helmet in black. Ugh. Oh no, yeah. that one. That one's sick. I love that helmet. White helmet with the hokey stone. Um, the New York Yankees, I thought the Yankee logo on the hat was awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, and then also this is, yeah, this is the hot take. It's the, it's the granite countertop yeah. cookie stone helmet from, oh, from Maryland 2013. Oh, I thought it looked phenomenal. I loved when, when the, uh, equipment room was, was getting a little, getting a little crazy. Yeah. Um, we saw a lot of variety, saw some good, saw some not so good. Uh, the foghorn leghorn and the hooky tracks come to mind. <laughs> I'll, give you, didn't love. I'll give you two more. Um, anything with TV. I love the massive fighting gobbler on the maroon that we wore against Rutgers. I like that helmet. Yeah, just, um, I also fun. like the orange lids that we wore against Syracuse in the orange bowl. I think that's a little bit of a hot take. I actually really Stanford. like those helmets. It, uh, Stanford. Thank you're you. Getting, you're getting your ACC opponents confused with S's. Um, I really, I really liked that. Uh, I really liked that. Like, that getting your, yeah, that's funny. <laughs> that's a good one. Tom, um, thank you for the submission. I, I love, this is an impressive collection. We'll have to put it out there in the, uh, in the article. Let's close this thing out. You got any Sharky shout outs? You got any, you got any fun? What are you thinking here? I'm really looking forward to this weekend. Um, I think it's going to be a ton of fun, uh, making the drive tomorrow. I'm hoping that traffic is not a disaster. I guarantee that it will be. Because I will be on the road, and they always make sure that the traffic is horrible when I'm on the road. Um, but no, no. Uh, shout out to everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Super thankful for all of you listeners and viewers out there, and people, uh, people supporting. So thankful for you guys. Yeah, that's a that's a nice way to like that. Yeah, we could do power rankings later of the Thanksgiving table. Um, let's see. I know I talked about the run across Virginia for Jimmy V, uh, Virginia Tech, and UVA Fiji. I'm going to talk with Bryce on the pod tomorrow. We'll do 10, 15 minutes. We'll put that out as a separate thing. Um, but that should be fun. And then uh, turning 29 on Friday. Um, so to honor my 29th birthday, I will be making my way down Route 29 in Virginia to Charlottesville. We are gobbling down to charlottesville this weekend i have a hotel hopefully you know we can have some post-game celebrations around the corner and uh and have a good time but looking forward to seeing you guys down there i probably won't be tailgating uh we'll be getting in close to game time from new jersey coming down on saturday um and obviously let's down. call it what it is pat let's call it what it is we're watching the we're watching the michigan ohio state game and we okay. got some good game. We got some good games on Friday. I don't. I yeah. didn't want to. You got the Civil War. You got the the other games. But <laughs> uh, some good games on Friday too. Didn't want to cut that short to uh, to kind of chunk up the drive. Going to come down with my sister on Saturday, and you know, find a place to watch the Ohio State Michigan game too. We can do this real quick. Favorite side 
favorite dessert, biggest hot take about Thanksgiving. Real quick. I can go while you think about it. Go ahead. Side, I love green bean casserole. That's probably a hot take. My dad makes it fantastic. Uh, everything my dad makes is great. Uh, but his green bean casserole is unbelievable. Dessert, pumpkin pie, Mitchell style. You get the pie. You put a fat scoop of vanilla ice cream right on top of it. Fantastic. Unbelievable. Hot take. Everybody complains, honestly, about, you know, the in-law or the infighting amongst the family um, and kind of the political disagreements or the, um, you know, lifestyle disagreements. I'm going to give you guys a challenge. It's going to happen anyway. Sit back and just just throw some crazy stuff over the fence and just watch watch it go nuts. You're going to argue a little bit when it comes to the time to argue on Thanksgiving. Just start just start poking the bear. It's usually my dad. Just throw some crazy stuff over the fence. It'll add to the entertainment value. When you know it's coming and you know it's going to happen, lean in. It'll make it more fun. It's my hot take. Sounds like an Anthony Calandria move. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, sides. You spent twenty six thousand dollars on sides. sides. They cure cancer. <laughs> uh, I guess this is a hot take as well as my favorite side. I'm putting mac and cheese in there. I know this is kind of like a recent thing and kind of highly debated. Some people are like, you know, I really didn't start eating mac and cheese at Thanksgiving until you know, until uh, the digital age here. Um, Ridiculous. I like it. I like mac and cheese, so I like it as a side. It's like, um, but granted, like you can't really have a a favorite side that you also eat, you know, out of every single month of the year. I mean, um, you know, you go to Panera Bread, mac and cheese. Um, sometimes you go, does Chick Fil A have mac, mac and cheese? cheese. I feel like they do. Their mac and cheese um, is not good. I like the Panera mac and cheese, yeah. but um, let's see uh, what else. Uh, Okay, I'll 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 do the PG version. Kiss Mary Kill of pies um, between pecan pie or pecan. I don't know the right way to say it. Pecan pie, apple pie, and pumpkin pie. Mary pumpkin oh. pie. Kiss pecan pie, and then killing apple pie. Just mushed fruit. Oh, not huge on I, it. Not huge on it. I. In terms of Thanksgiving, I'd probably kill apple pie. I love apple pie, but pecan and uh, and pumpkin pie are staples at Thanksgiving. Um, I mean, honestly, you can put any type of pie in front of me, and it's gonna get it's gonna get eaten. So, um, any hot takes? Hot takes. The, the The tree goes up the day after or the weekend after. If your tree is already up, I'm sorry. Uh, we're probably probably just a little different, and it's fine. Uh, it's nothing personal, but. Um, the, the Christmas tree goes up after Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's not, we're a little it's, different, Pat. It's, it's it's not the law, but it should be. Yeah, no, we uh, Pat. I don't think it's breaking news. We are a little different. So I'm a big uh, I'm a big I'm a big uh, Christmas celebrator. Um, Is your I'd tree start, up though, uh, Pat? Like, where would I even put a tree? I, I don't know where I'm going to be living on Christmas. So I don't even know where. <laughs> If I had a, if I had a permanent residence, my tree would be up. If I if I'm if I FaceTime Russ Mitchell right now and I say, "Hey Russ, show me the tree." Is he going to have a tree to show me, or is he going to say, no. "Hey, I need, I need hell to hell go no. chop it down with no, Jackson"? No, he's got he's 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 got bigger fish to fry. But uh, he probably has been diving into the Michael Bublé and the uh, he he's probably you know he'll probably be cooking. He'll do this when when he starts cooking on on Thanksgiving. He'll play the Peanuts song um the the thanksgiving uh charlie brown song and then it'll be some christmas and probably some irish mu irish tenors um music so um but he's 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 certainly in the spirit um he's certainly in the spirit but whether you're listening to this pre-thanksgiving whether you're listening to this on the way down whether you're listening to this three years from now uh which some of you do it's pretty funny to see some of the statistics on who's listening to podcasts when they're listening to them i'm talking to you john cran who listens to the UFC <laughs> six overtime game every every three months? Um, thankful for you. Hope you all have a great holiday. Hopefully, you all have a great time. Throw some crazy stuff over the ledge uh, with the family, and um, we'll be talking to you soon. Enjoy the games. Go sports.
Go Hokies. Go Birds. Be safe traveling to Charlottesville and have fun. <laughs>